this is Carrie from Your Level Best, and today I'm talking about adding potassium to a recipe. And you can hear her out behind me, just so you know, if you hear a lawnmower out behind me, that's actually Tony mowing the lawn today. So let's go ahead and get into our video. So I'm talking about potassium. Um, here's something that maybe you haven't thought of before. Have you ever felt really bloated during the day, really bloated, and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I need to drink more water. And that's what they usually tell you is to drink a whole bunch of water and then it will get rid of the, the uncomfortable bloating. Well, bloating usually happens because of salt. And the thought is if you drink more water, you'll actually get rid of all that excess sodium. And have you ever found that it doesn't always work? Occasionally it works, but it doesn't always. Well, the reason why it doesn't work is you're not getting enough potassium to balance out your sodium. Potassium helps with things like building muscle, um, digesting carbohydrates, or using the nutrients from carbohydrates. Um, it also helps with the electrical system in your heart. Um, and it's also electrolytes, so you really need to get enough potassium in your diet. And you need to balance your sodium and potassium levels in your body. Now, Tony, I'll... Uh, put a link up here uh, to his video where he talks more about the sodium and potassium balance that you need in your body. So I checked that out. He's gonna talk about that in more detail. Um, but today I'm gonna show you how to add it in a recipe. According to the National Institutes of Health, um, an adult needs about 4,700 milligrams of potassium per day. And that's to balance out sodium of approximately 2,300 milligrams per day. So you need quite a bit, but you need to be careful how much you're eating because if you go over and you have kidney problems, you need to make sure you're not getting too much. So keep in mind how much you're eating and you wanna measure how much potassium that you're eating in a day. But you still need to get some, and I think a lot of people are woefully under their potassium levels. So let me show you how you can add this to a recipe um, with some common ingredients. Now I don't have them all here, but here are some things that I use a lot to increase the potassium in a recipe. So you'll see I've got a whole bunch of different things. Um, First, I'm gonna actually talk about our potatoes, and that's what's right here. I have a white potato and a sweet potato. Now, I think the white potato gets a bad rap. A lot of people think that eating a white potato is very bad for you, but actually, it's quite good for you. It's good for you if, now let me tell you how I normally cook with a potato. Typically, I use a potato as an adjunct to a recipe. I will add it to a recipe as is, um, and I don't peel it for the most part. I very rarely peel potatoes because I think the skin has a lot of fiber and nutrients on its own. But when I eat it just as is as a potato, like I do for lunch um, on the weekends, I make sure to do two things. Number one, I just bake it in the microwave. It's funny, normally I don't like the way microwave, a microwave actually um, makes the texture on some things, but for some odd reason, I actually prefer baked potato done in the microwave than I do in the oven. It takes less time and it's a lot fluffier in my opinion. So it's up to you. You can actually pierce it with a fork a few times and a small potato will take about four minutes. So it doesn't take a lot. So that's how I can do a quick lunch with it. But also you wanna weigh your potatoes. You want to make sure that if you're going to eat a potato as is, you're going to weigh it. And I have a, a scale right here that I use to weigh my food. And a lot of people think, oh, I don't need to weigh, I'll just estimate. But when you estimate, you're actually not getting the calories quite correct. And a potato, a white potato, actually is for 110 calories is only 148 grams. It's about three ounces. It's not a whole heck of a lot. It's actually quite small, and the potato I have here in front of me is actually more than that. So you can't eat a big hunk of potato um, and expect to keep your calories down. So make sure that when you're eating potatoes, it's an adjunct to something, it's an ingredient in a recipe, or if you're gonna eat it as, as I do for lunch every day, um, you want to make sure that it's smaller. It's 148 grams or around there, I usually go a little bit higher. That's not a problem because it does fit in within my calories, but just make sure you're measuring. 
Sweet potatoes, again, are, I talked about these in my vitamin A, um, adding vitamin A to a recipe. They are a potassium powerhouse. These are wonderful. They have vitamin A and potassium, but remember, they're only healthy if you eat them when you put them in a recipe or you eat them as is. You don't want to add a lot of oil and butter and sugar and, and marshmallows and all the crap that we like to put in them for Thanksgiving. Try not doing all that because sweet potatoes taste great on their own. And I think a lot of potatoes in general get a bad rap because we eat them as french fries and we douse them in grease. And yes, they're bad for you when you do all that. But when you eat them as is, just steamed, they're wonderful, they're tasty, and they are a great vehicle for carbohydrates, potassium, and in the case of a sweet potato, vitamin A. I also have here an avocado. This is another great way to get potassium in your diet. Now, this is another particular ingredient that you need to be careful with. You can get good healthy fat by eating avocados. However, they are high caloric. So you don't wanna go ahead and throw, you know, a full half of, um, of an avocado in one serving of food because I think it's about 200 calories per half, roughly, depending on the size but you want to be very careful how much you, of this you add. I'm not saying you shouldn't use it. I'm just saying you, you need to use this sparingly, but oh, is it a great way of getting potassium? Um, the way you cook with these is these are a finisher. These are used as is or mixed in things, but you do not cook them. You cook them, they get mealy, they get gross. They're, they're not worth it. So it's guacamole. You want to use it as a topping for uh, your recipes. Now, I have here in front of me three bowls of beans. Now, these are potassium powerhouses as well, and these are easy to add to a recipe, and I love using beans. Now, I have here three kinds. I have lentils, I have pinto beans, and I have black beans. Now, these are wonderful ways to add potassium to a recipe, and also add some protein, a vegetarian protein at that. Um, these also have carbohydrates. A lot of people don't realize that um, if you're doing a low-carb diet, I don't recommend that you do that, but if you're doing a low-carb diet, beans actually have quite a bit of carbohydrates in them. I know when, when Tony wants to have a lot of carbohydrates in his meal, I know he's trying to get his balance with his macros. If he wants a lot more carbohydrates, beans are the way to do it, and lentils especially. When I make there's, there's a dish that I, that I make called Tunisian lentil stew. It's got 60 grams of carbs, and that's because of the lentils. So you'll get your carbs, but you'll also get vegetarian protein, and you'll also build out your dish. I use beans a lot when the meat protein that I'm using, um, meat protein a lot of times get, has a lot of carb, not a lot of carbs, a lot of calories in it, and sometimes the beans are much lower calorie, and if I still need to add some protein to the dish, I'll use the beans as well. So it adds potassium and it adds protein. So these are wonderful additions to your dish. So there are also other things. I didn't mention bananas. I don't have one here in front of me. Bananas are a great thing if you like bananas, but remember they're about 110 calories per banana. Um, there's also spinach and celery. Celery is one of those weird ones that you don't think it adds much of anything to a dish, but celery adds a lot of potassium, and I do use that occasionally um, in a dish to add potassium. Sometimes I even add it to my baked potato to get a little bit more potassium if I'm really low. One thing I do want to talk about uh, briefly, and this is something that Tony and I both use, but I want to tell you that you want to be careful with using this stuff. And I have here in front of me some salt substitute. Now you can buy different types of salt substitutes um, at your grocery store. A lot of times they're in small containers like this. It's, it's really hard to get them in anything bigger than this. But a salt substitute is something that you can use to add potassium in your diet. You can use it as a potassium supplement. Most of these, and I believe this one has about 690 milligrams per quarter teaspoon. So you want to use this sparingly. And again, if you have a medical issue where you cannot ingest that much potassium, you need to be careful with how much of this you use. Now, Tony and I do use this. I will admit we use this. And I typically have to put this in something sweet. 
um, because this stuff, I, I made the mistake because typically when I'm going to start cooking with an ingredient, I like to know what it tastes like so that when I add it to a recipe, I know what it's going to do to the dish. Holy bitter, Batman. This thing, this stuff is so bitter that when I just put a little bit on my tongue, it took me two hours to get rid of the taste. So it's very bitter. You want to add it to something that'll counteract that bitterness. However, if you need to get more potassium in your day and you're not getting enough of your food, you can use this, but there are plenty of ways to get it through your food. Um, but if you need to supplement throughout the day, this is one way to do it. That way you're not taking pills, but I use it in my yogurt and that helps a lot. Uh, Tony uses it in peanut butter, but you'll need to find what tastes good with this but you don't necessarily have to use it, but I wanted to let you know this is a good way to add potassium if you're not getting enough in your diet. So keep this in mind. So I hope you guys got some ideas on how to add potassium to your recipe. Check out our blog post. I actually have all of the amounts of, um, of potassium for each of these ingredients and for a few more common ingredients. And I also have um, a link down below to Tony's post that has the sodium and, and potassium ratios and talks about balance. And I also have his video linked um, on this screen. So take a look at how you can actually add more potassium to your dishes. How do you do it? So leave a comment below, let us know. Please subscribe to our channel and check out some of our other, other videos. We've got lots of other videos that um, talk about different things you can add to your recipe to make sure it's more nutritionally sound. So check out some of those videos as well. Um, we have a full playlist on healthy eating, so check those out. And also check out our blog at yourlevelbest.net. I'm Carrie, and we'll see you next time.